This is going to be an overview of the book of Habakkuk. And we're coming through our Bibles. We're making progress. We're working towards something. We're learning about certain topics. We're not just pulling a verse out here and a verse out there. We're consistently making progress. We're trying to complete something. And if you've been with me this far, we've made it from Genesis to Habakkuk. We're also uh, about to do Joshua, an outline for Joshua for the Taking Notes in the Bible series. And we did the God's Game of Thrones series where I took you through the whole Bible, showed you the really important topics throughout the Bible. And if you will get all these uh, down in your Bible, taking notes, you're really going to make progress in learning the Bible. So Habakkuk, an overview of the book of Habakkuk. This is a pre-exile book, which means it is before the captivity by Babylon. Before the captivity of Judah by Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. So it's a pre-exile book, and we see that with Habakkuk 1.6, for it says, For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, which is Babylon, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. So historically, remember we got our three applications, historically, doctrinally, and devotionally. If you can get them down, it'll really help you. Historically, this book is Habakkuk's burden for Judah's rebellion. Doctrinally, it is the chastening of Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble, the Antichrist persecuting them, and you're going to see the second coming of Christ in this. Devotionally or spiritually, what can we get out of it? What do we get out of it? We can see the chastening of God in the life of a believer. And Habakkuk's name means to embrace. And this is a very short book. It has three chapters, 56 verses, and 1,476 words. Historically, the time is 626 B.C. And a good portion of the book is just a conversation between Habakkuk and the Lord. In chapter 1, you'll see Habakkuk's first complaint. In chapter 2, you'll see his second complaint. And in chapter 3, you have the prayer of Habakkuk. In chapter 1, you have the troubled prophet asking the Lord why. Do you ever find yourself asking the Lord why? Sometimes we think we know more than God and that what he's doing doesn't make sense. However, it all makes sense when it's from the Lord. So in chapter 1, you're going to see him asking why. You're going to see the burden of Habakkuk. What's bothering him? In chapter 1, you have the first complaint from Habakkuk. Then you have an answer from the Lord. But he says in Habakkuk 1, 2 through 4, O Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. The Lord goes on to tell him how he is raising up the Chaldeans to come against Judah. And it's like that in your life today. Maybe you have gotten away from the Lord. The Lord will bring a person or people in your life that will cause you trouble. And this, you, this will get you back on track. Paul's thorn helped keep him close to the Lord. In the life of a believer, God can put a thorn in the form of a person to make you get close to him again. That person will become a thorn in the flesh. But Habakkuk wants to know why the Lord is, doing, is allowing to happen what's happening. He wants God to go after the wicked. And Habakkuk needs to be patient because no evil deed is going unpunished. He says in verse 12, Art thou from everlasting, O Lord? That's exactly where the Lord's from. So he was before the beginning. There was no beginning without him. And the best thing we can do is line up with what he says. I was born 32 years ago. The Lord's been here. Since before the beginning, since he, from eternity, why would I think I know more than him? Everything the Lord does is right. In chapter 2, you have an answer to Habakkuk's burden. You see also some things every Baptist preacher preaches about. And hellfire is one of those things. In Habakkuk 2, 5, Yea, also because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell. 
The Bible talks about how hell hath enlarged herself. It keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's never full. The Bible mentions hell over and over. So how does one preach the Bible without mentioning hell? The next thing is alcohol. In Habakkuk 2.15, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Have you Here you have one of the greatest verses against alcohol in the Bible. And it explains why man in 2021 gives a girl strong drink. It is so he can look on her nakedness. Woe unto him that givest his never drink, that puttest the bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Every good preacher preaches against alcohol. And next, the next thing is idols. Every good preacher preaches against idols. America has idols. They hold it in their hand every day. I did a study called iPhone Idolatry, and if you want to check it out, check it out. But the Lord makes it very clear about these idols. Habakkuk 2.18 and 19. What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? The molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake, to the dumb stone arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver. And there is no breath at all in the midst of it. The idols are worthless. And every good preacher preaches against the idols of his day. We may not have the same idols that they had back in 626 B.C., but we have idols today. In chapter 3, you have a prayer from Habakkuk. And this is where you have some of the greatest second coming verses in the entire Bible. Habakkuk 3, 8 through 12, was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea? That thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word, Selah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers, the mountains saw thee and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by, the deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. When Jesus Christ comes back at the second coming, he's going to thresh the heathen in anger. What an unpopular subject, because today people don't want to hear about God's anger. They want to hear about the love of God. That's all you hear the TV preachers preach on. And in our minds, in our own little Bible-believing world, we start thinking that everybody knows about the preachers we listen to, but they have no idea about the preachers we listen to, about the teachers that we listen to. All they see is the preachers on television. Those are the popular preachers of our day. And they never preach on these topics. They never preach on the second coming because it's a time of anger. It's a time of wrath and fire and destruction on the wicked. He's going to thresh the heathen in anger. He sees the abortion. The Lord sees the perversion. He sees the wicked man oppressing. He sees the evil intents of men that they they devise in their mind as they lay in their, their bed at night. He sees the blasphemy and the hatred for his holy word, and he's finally going to unleash a can of 6,000 years worth of vengeance on this earth, and you better be behind him instead of in front of him. It says, Paul says in 2 Thessalonians, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I rarely go a whole study without mentioning the second coming. How could I when it's the most talked about thing in the Holy Scriptures? Don't call yourself a Bible preacher or teacher if you don't mention the second coming. How could you? You're not touching very much of the Bible if you don't never talk about the second coming. Habakkuk 3.13 says, Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Selah. So he's crushing the head of the serpent, as he's done throughout the Bible. You saw him with David. What, he, what David did to Goliath. You see the head wound there. You seen a uh, jail. Put the head wound in Sisera when she put that tent peg in his head. You see it all through the Bible, the head wound. When Jesus Christ was crucified, they stabbed that cross 
right into Golgotha, the place of the skull. You see the head wound all the way throughout the Bible. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. He's crushing the head of the serpent. He's wounding the head in the house of the wicked. The one with the wounds in his hands and his feet is coming to turn the counterfeit white horse rider into a headless horseman. Habakkuk 3.14, Now did his march, thou did his strike through with his staves, the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly. Thou didst march through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great water. So the Lord's going to leave heaven on a white horse. He's going to go straight through that sea of glass and through those deeps up there between the first two heavens and make his way to this earth. And they're going to look up and they're going to see and they're going to have terror on their faces when they see the living God coming down out of the sky with ten thousands of his saints. Habakkuk 3.16, when I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. So Habakkuk, three very short chapters. It was like, what was it, 56 verses. You could memorize this very quickly. And it's got so much in there. Some of the greatest verses on the second coming are in the book of Habakkuk. It's not an outdated book. It's more up to date than anything you've got in your house. It knows the future more than anything. It's more up to date than the news. It's more up to date than the newspapers. But I hope that you've took notes on this. Get the notes about it in your Bible. Get down the historical application, the doctrinal, the devotional. And just familiarize yourself with this book. The more familiar you get, the better off you're going to be. We're making progress. We're working through our Bibles. We're working towards something, getting something accomplished. That's what you got to do. If you want to live the victorious Christian life, get a purpose. Be working towards something. We're trying to get our Bibles together. Trying to learn as much of the Word of God as we can. Try to memorize as much of the Word of God as we can. Because who knows how much longer uh, this can even go on on YouTube. Um, because they could shut the channel off tomorrow. There's already been Bible Living channels t taken down already. So let's take advantage of this while we can. I would suggest downloading uh, Bible Believing sermons and teachings from, from certain websites, from certain teachers and preachers, putting them on a, a, a portable hard drive or something. That way you've got a Bible library so that if they take all this off the internet and you just, you, you can't watch it or listen to it anymore, you have it right there in your house. You need to hide the Word of God in your heart. If they take away your Bibles, they can't take it out of your heart. It's already there. But this has been an overview of the book of Habakkuk.